us on this wonderful Sunday morning. Please join us as we uh, worship our Savior this morning. Amen. Yes. Amen. We just come before you, Father, thanking you. Lord, that is all we want to do today is thank you. We don't want to ask you for anything. We want to thank you. We want to bless your name. We want to give you the glory and the honor that you are due. We just want you, Lord, to just do as you say, Lord. We don't have to worry about you not keeping your word because you are such a faithful God. You do inhabit the praises of your people. And we just thank you for that, God. We thank you for trusting us to be those people to praise you so you will inhabit, Lord God. And I just bless your name, Lord. I thank you for the word that is going to go forth, that will penetrate the hearts, Lord. It's not just going to feel good to the ears and the senses, but it will convict, Holy Ghost, convict, change lives, change hearts. In the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. It's kind of hard to sing a song called My Worship and just sing it and not get into worship, amen? And because we serve such an awesome God who's worthy of all worship, this is just a personal song. The song is called My Worship, which means every single individual has to worship him for themselves. I just want you to sit and think about everything he has done for you, the things that you did not deserve, the things that he didn't even have to do. But because of his abundant grace and mercy and his love for us, 
He continues to bless us. His mercies are new every morning, and that alone is enough to worship our God for. Amen.
family. Thanks for joining us today. We're so glad to have you. I have a few announcements for you. Number one, we have our town hall meeting today at 5 p.m. This is a chance for our leadership and pastors to uh, let you know what the future of New City Church is and where we're going and what direction we're taking. So we'd love to have you join us. There's going to be question and answer. So if you have any questions about the direction of the church, we'd love to answer those for you. And this is going to be a Zoom call. And so the link that, that we are using has been emailed to you or uh, in the app notifications or a text message. If you haven't received any of those, please email me directly and my email will be in the chat and on this video. You can see it somewhere around here. So, so be free, feel free to email me and I'll send you that Zoom link. Uh, the next thing is our after service connection time. We had a great time last week uh, with some folks that, that joined us on again on Zoom uh, after each service and it's a chance for you to connect with people, uh, connect with our staff, um, if you need prayer, we're available to do, to do a virtual prayer with you. Uh, and, and if you're a guest especially, we want to connect with you and get your information so that we can uh, help you get to know us a little better and we can get to know you. So that's our after service connection time. Uh, the link will be shown in, in the chat at the end of the service and you can join us there. The last thing is Angel Tree. We're so excited to partner with Angel Tree and to help families in our community um, that, that desperately need our help. And I'm standing here next to our, our Angel Tree here in the lobby, but obviously we haven't had a chance to be able to see this in person. So we want to invite you to uh, grab a tag, but we want you to do something different. We want you to email Sharon directly, and her email will show up on this video as well, and as well as the, the chat. Um, but you can email her to grab a tag. And I wanted to read a couple of these tags that are here. Uh, we have a boy that's age nine that wants a remote control car or truck and gift cards. So these cards aren't huge amounts of money and it's something that we can do that's tangible. This is probably uh, $25, 30, $30 that you can do to make, make a child's Christmas. Here's another one, another boy that's age nine and, and he wants a, a Target gift card and a sweatshirt. And I think, I think these, these small gifts that we can do will really make a huge impact. And these kids are dealing with, um, maybe they haven't gotten a lot for Christmas or maybe they're, um, they haven't, their parents have had a hard time financially or possibly one of their parents is incarcerated. And we wanna be a blessing to them. So email Sharon and have a chance to make a kid's day um, and make their Christmas even better this year. And uh, the, the gifts are gonna be due back next week, so you don't have a lot of time. So I would email Sharon as soon as you can and, and, and she can find a card and send it to you and give you the information. You don't even have to come into the church for that, um, but you will need to come to the church to drop off those gifts by the 13th, which is next week. So be sure to set up that time with Sharon. So email her again to set up a time to drop off the gifts, but email her first of all to grab a tag off this tree and help make uh, Christmas even brighter for these families that need it. So we're so thankful for that and the ability to do that. Let's, uh, let's pray and, and, and take our offering. So you have all sorts of options in order to give, um, but, you'll, but you can give online there's a link in the chat um, and on our website you can give or you can mail in a check to to the church so let's pray god we thank you so much for this time and opportunity that we have to be together even though it's virtually god i ask that you would just um, have your way and bless the words of pastor rod and that it would soak into our hearts and that we would um, enjoy just being in your presence. And so we thank you for all that you're doing in our lives and we thank you for keeping us safe and, and helping us through this time. Lord, we ask that you would just uh, burden our hearts for our community and help us to do all that we can for those that are around us and those that we can help in different ways. And so we praise you for it in Jesus' name, amen. The good news of Christ brings peace. Peace to our journey, our lives, 
our souls and hearts. It's one of the most supernatural gifts that can be given, and it's available today. When talking about the armor of God, Paul said we should have feet fitted for the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I like this idea that peace is something that you wear. When a soldier puts boots on, he was covering and defending his feet, preserving the foot from danger and securing it for march, making him firm in battle. This gospel of peace helps us on our walk and our march through our life. As Matt Redmond sings, I am in the storm, Lord, the storm is not in me. So ask for his peace today and he will send it. Good morning, New City and Cornerstone Family Church. I am excited to come and share a word with you today. Uh, as you know, John just had a powerful word for us in the video when he talked about the gift of peace. Uh, and think about that. He said, you know, peace is something that you wear. Uh, and I think that that is like so insightful that we put on peace that you know, as we have, you know, the peace uh, that I think the scripture says, put on peace that comes from the good news uh, so that you will be fully prepared. So as we walk around that you are carrying peace with you, you're walking in peace. I love that. Uh, and so thank you, John, for uh, sharing that with us today. And, you know, I think about uh, as uh, our pastor shared with us uh, last week about Advent and we're in this season of where they were waiting for the Messiah uh, and we're waiting for Jesus to come again. Uh, but last week they talked about hope. Uh, and, you know, I think that was such an important uh, message for us because we are living in times where uh, you can think that there is nothing to hope for. Uh, but the message of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ coming is something that we can hope for. And so today we're going to uh, go back. We're going to actually travel back, uh, you know, 700 years uh, and, and uh, think about, uh, really it's 2,700 years, think about uh, a, a promise that God made uh, to his people. Uh, the promise was God's Christmas present to us, uh, that unto us a child would be born, a son would be given. And so in some ways, this series that we uh, are in called The Gift uh, can become kind of a landmark for us, you know, in these crazy times that can refocus us on and, and remind us of the hope, the joy, the peace, and the love that came when God gave us the gift of His Son. And so this morning we want to talk about the huge promise that God made to us, this great big promise and this great big gift that God gave to us uh, while we are, you know, we're living in such darkness that he would come and he would tell us that he would give us his son. So let's look at our passage for today, which is going to come out of Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Well, this morning we're going to talk about the promise of peace. That's the gift that God gave us, this promise of peace. Here in Isaiah, we learn from that, you know, 700 years before Jesus was born, God started telling people about the miracle of Christmas, that he was so excited about that. And, you know, I, I, I'm reminded of sometimes, Karen, you know, as 
uh, it's either my birthday or we at Christmas and she gets so excited about what she's got me that, you know, she kind of lets the cat out of the bag a little bit. And so I think that God was doing that here uh, with Isaiah. He's kind of letting, uh, le letting him know of this great gift that was coming uh, to the world uh, and that would be his son. Uh, and so, you know, I don't know about you, um, but maybe you're done with your Christmas shopping. You know, I know that I'm not done yet. Um, but over 700 years before it happened, God knew exactly what he was getting his children for Christmas. He was getting them Jesus, the Prince of Peace. You know, back then, God, he used his trusted person, Isaiah, to, and, and he shared with Isaiah, who was kind of this ordinary man, he shared with him of this amazing gift that he would give. You know, one of the things that Isaiah, that uh, God told Isaiah, he, he told him about the coming of the Messiah, Messiah. And so throughout the book of Isaiah, you know, God, he revealed all sorts of names for Jesus, for the Messiah. But in this passage, Isaiah 9, he refers to four names. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so today I want to focus on that last one, Prince of Peace. Because Jesus' coming was this promise of peace. And so Prince of Peace, as Isaiah, he wrote it in his native language of Hebrew, is Shar Shalom. Shar Shalom. So repeat that with me, if you will. Shar Shalom. Shar Shalom means Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Shar Shalom. Shar is the word for prince, and you know, normally we think of the prince being the son of a king, but that's not what this really was, was designed to make us think. This word shar, it, it literally means head person, captain, governor, prince, the man in charge, the go-to guy. And so Jesus, he is the head person, the captain, the governor, the prince. He is the shar shalom. Shalom is the word for peace. In the Hebrew language, peace is, is, it has a rich and powerful meaning. Shalom means well-being, happiness, or peace. So Jesus is the governor of well-being. He is the captain of happiness. He is the ruler of peace. He is the man in charge of all this. I hope you are catching that this morning, that Jesus is the ruler of peace. It is through Jesus that we have peace. And so Jesus is the Shar Shalom. You know, look at what the angels said uh, in Luke 2 when they announced Jesus' birth. Luke 2, verses 13 and 14. It says, Then suddenly... There appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, an angelic army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among men whom he is well pleased. Did you catch that? At Jesus' birth, heaven realized the importance and proclaimed it to all the people on earth that it now could be possible that there would be peace on earth. If you think about Bible times and all the wars and fighting over land and all of that, this announcement was an amazing announcement that even heaven could not contain it of the importance of Jesus coming to the earth as the Prince of Peace. I don't know about you, but I need that in my life right now, some, some peace in, in my life. In this world of confusion, I need peace in my life. And so it is good news, this promise of peace that God gave way back in Isaiah's time. And we're living in that today. And so it brings me to my first point that says, Jesus brings peace on earth. Jesus brings peace on earth. You know, at his birth, he brought peace on earth. And I want you to ponder for a minute that baby laying in the manger, this one that God says, he is the Shar Shalom. He is the Prince of Peace. You know, Jesus, he brought peace at his birth, but, you know, the Bible says that he spent the next 30 years growing up. 
living a normal life like any human being. He, he had to identify with the things that we go through. He experienced hunger. He was tired. He was disappointed. He experienced family. And sometimes there's not a lot of peace in, in family some days. Uh, he, he, he learned a trade. Uh, sometimes on our job, there's not a lot of peace. He earned a living. He made friends. He celebrated birthdays with relatives. Have you thought about that for a minute? Jesus' birthday. You know, I know we celebrate it in a different way, but Jesus celebrated his birthday. And he wasn't like all of us that, you know, we celebrate our birthday and we get presents. And then on Christmas, we get presents. Think about Jesus. He only got presents once a year, and that was on his birthday. That was, that was it for him. But Jesus, think about it, that he had a mom. He, he, he had many things going on in his life. And, and, but at his birth, there was this announcement that here comes peace on the scene. You know, as he was growing up and as he got of age, his mom, was, they were at a wedding and his mom was worried about, you know, the fact that they were running out of wine, the wedding party, they were worried about it. And they turned to Jesus to, to, to do something about it. And he turned wine into water, bringing peace over that situation. And so Jesus, he not only brought peace at his birth, but he brought peace through the miracles that he performed. Jesus also, in the words that he spoke, he brought peace Look at this, this passage out of Luke 18, verse 19. It says, and, and this actually was a reference back to a, a passage in Isaiah. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, and that the blind will see, and that the opposed will be set free, the oppressed will be set free and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. All of those words were words of peace. They amazed people when they heard it, that Jesus could come and have such impact, that people who were suffering, they would be released of that suffering because Jesus came on the scene. Wow, what peace came with him, not only through, through his birth and the miracles, but all through, also through the words that he spoke. And so we have, just for a moment, if you think about this, the moment that he came to earth, he brought peace to all who visited him. Then his miracles brought peace to all who experienced them, and his word brought peace to all who received them. Jesus is the Shar Shalom. Jesus is the captain of peace. Now, I want to turn our attention to kind of the last time that Jesus gave kind of a, a, a formal public talk. And he said this in John 14, verse 1. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. You know, when there's trouble or your heart is troubled, there is no peace. You, you, you worry not knowing how things will work out. You, you worry not sure if you will be okay. You, you worry about this and you worry about that. You lose sleep and you can't eat and you, you snap it uh, at everybody who comes around. You just are not at peace because there's trouble inside. There, there are things going on. And, and Jesus, he saw that on his disciples' face because he told them that he was going to have to leave. And, and, and I'm sure that they got got really concerned with what was life going to be like without Jesus here. And so Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. And so it brings me to my second point, and that is that Jesus brings peace in times of trouble. Somebody ought to say amen to that this morning because, you know, we are living in troubled times, but Jesus brings peace in times of, pro of trouble. Jesus, in that John passage, he goes on to say why we should not let our hearts be troubled. In verse 27, he says of chapter 14, he says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. 
And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus, he is the Shar Shalom. Jesus is the ruler of peace. You know, in a few weeks, we're going to be opening up our gifts. But Jesus, he's saying, that gift is not under the tree. That gift only comes, this gift of peace only comes from you having a relationship with me. I know a lot of times we put our trust in, am I going to get the right gift, that gift that's going to make me happy? And you know what? After maybe a couple of weeks with that gift, we put that gift aside and we're on to the next thing that doesn't make us happy. But Jesus, he says that I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace that I give you, the world cannot give it. That's the peace that I want. That's the peace that I need in my life. Now, I'm going to jump back to Isaiah, Isaiah 9, verse 7, and it says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. And so my last point today is, that Jesus brings everlasting peace. Jesus brings everlasting peace. He brought peace at his birth. And he, you know, he, he gives us peace in times of trouble. But I want you to know that he brings everlasting peace. And, you know, it, it begs the question, right? How can that be? How can he, th there be no end to peace as a result of, Christ child coming. After all, there's no peace in our day. There's wars that happen around the world. There, this virus is stressing all of us out. You know, the other day I just, I just get, like, got fed up with this virus and I'm ready for it to be over. There's division and there's protest, you know, a, around our land. And so how could how could this statement be true that, that, that there, there will be no end to his peace? You have to understand what Jesus said in those final words to his disciple back in John 14. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give to you as the world gives it. It is a different kind of peace. He's saying that this kind of peace, the world that he gives, is not the kind of peace you get from the world. He's talking about spiritual peace. Peace in your soul. Peace that comes from the sense of having God's presence with you and forgiveness of sins and, and hope and purpose. It is the peace that only can come from God. It's not what comes from the world. The world is going to present you with all kind of things, but it is not the peace that God gives you. Have you noticed what happens when a person gives their life to Christ? The bo before and after shots are completely different. You know, I was talking with a guy uh, not long ago uh, who, who lives in Texas, and, and three years ago he gave his life to Christ, and he was telling me about what his life was like before, how, you know, and he was like this big guy that, you, that, that, you know, he was kind of the true Texan, a big cowboy kind of a guy. And he, he says, you know, I, I, I lived my life. I, I have a family, a wife, and a couple of kids. And I was out working and doing what I wanted to do, not treating my wife well and not spending time with my kids. And I was frustrated all the time. I was mad all the time. I was angry all the time. But, but he was talking with a guy uh, uh, who was a believer, and, and he noticed in this guy that, that he just seemed to have this peaceful life. And so he asked the guy, he says, what is it about your life that gives you so much peace? And the guy began to share with him Jesus Christ. And at that moment, the guy says, hey, would you pray with me? And he accepted Jesus Christ. 
And so he is telling me over these last three years, he has been on fire for Christ. He, his marriage is so much better. It's so great. His kids, he's spending time with kids and he's just being blessed by his kids and the things that they're doing. His, his job is, is a blessing and, and, and he's seeing great ways to serve God even in that. I'm telling you, when you accept Jesus Christ, when you have that peace within you, Things change in your life. You know, in that passage, God predicted that Jesus' government would increase because people would submit their lives to him. People would look around at their choices and they'd say, hey, I can invest my life in a number of things in different ways, but which way will give me what I want? And I think that that's where the pause has to happen. What is it that I really want? I'm looking for. In those sober moments of our thoughts, we look past, you know, the trinkets and all of the enticements, the, the, the gifts on the, under the tree. We look past all of that because, you know, th those things are going to make us feel good for a little bit. And, 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 and they even may make others think better of me. But really, at the end of the day, what you really want and what you're really looking for is shalom, well-being, happiness, peace. That's what you really are looking for. And it makes sense. From what I know about Jesus, that how he lived his life and what he promised people and how he delivered on his promises. I know that I should bow myself before him and invite him to rule my life, to be the prince of it, to give me the peace that I need and that I'm looking for. You know, people have been making that decision to give their lives to Christ for more than 20 centuries, and it's working. This invisible government, this, this church, this reign of, of Jesus over his church, it, it is the largest organization on earth. Anybody can join it. Even you can join it. Because I think that you really want that shalom type of peace. You want God to do something in your life that's going to give you the peace that you so much desire. But the Bible says that this government, it really only increases by one individual at a time. Those who submit their lives to him. And it also predicts that one day Jesus is going to return. And that is the advent that we're waiting on, is Jesus to come back. And when he returns, then his re reign won't just be a spiritual one. It will be a physical one. In the future, it says that he will restore nature and rule the world. What kind of rule? That, that's the kind of ruler that I want, is the, this prince of peace. Let's look in the, in, in the passage here in Isaiah 11, verses 6 through 9, that's going to tell us what Jesus' government, when it becomes physical, what it's going to feel like. Starting at verse 6 in Isaiah 11, it says, In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and a little child will lead them. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put his hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled 
with people who know the Lord. Boy, doesn't that sound like such a peaceful time? Such a peaceful time. That is, that is what the Prince of Peace is all about, is creating this world full of peace, where peace will never end. You know, when he comes, even nature will be at peace, and the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. How about you? Are you one of those people who know the Lord? Do you have real shalom, real well-being, real happiness inside? Do you have real peace in your life? Well, today, if you don't, I want to give you an opportunity to give your heart to Christ and receive this Prince of Peace into your life. And so, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord, I want you to repeat this prayer after me and open up your heart to Him. Say it with me. God, I thank you for Jesus, the Prince of Peace. I realize today that I'm sinful and I have no peace in my life. And I want to give my heart to Jesus. I know that he is your son. I know that you raised him from the dead. And today, I want him to be Lord of my life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to connect with you. And the way to do that is shown on the screen. And so if you would engage in that way so that we can connect with you, because we know that this walk and this life can be tough, and we want to help walk that out with you. So if you would connect with us in the way that's shown on the screen. And as we wrap up today, I know that there is a lot going on and sometimes we, we feel trouble in our lives and we're not at peace and we need others to pray with us. And so if you would go on the app and, 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 and click the ways to uh, submit your prayer requests, we want to pray with you. But there's an opportunity right now, right after this service, to connect and that is through some Zoom links that we're going to send out that's there in the chat. If you would click on those links, we want to spend maybe 30 minutes or so together. Maybe discussing some points from the message, but more importantly, to spend some time to pray with one another. And so you can click on those links there in the chat so that you can connect with other believers. We thank you so much for joining in with us today. I pray that God would send peace your way through this season that can be so frantic and so busy. May God continue to bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. Don't go anywhere. Our after-service connection time is starting right now. So join us for a time of connection and discussion based on today's sermon. It only takes about 20 minutes. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the chat below for some much needed human interaction.